The vexed issue of national conference has been on for quite some time in Nigeria. Late elder statesman Anthony Enauro was the first to raise the idea when he mentioned it in the parliament in the First Republic. It's a call for all the ethnic nationalities and other contending forces in the country to sit at the negotiation table. But since the collapse of June 12 elections, the clamor for national dialogue has been on the front burner, consistently promoted more by rights activists and politicians from Nigeria's southwest. A few even wanted and still call for something a bit more radical, something they call sovereign national conference. But it's the proposal of President Gulag Jonathan on Nigeria's Independence Day that reopens a naughty issue. Many argue that the call for national conference was relevant only at the time when Nigeria was struggling to come out of the grip of military rule. They say that after 14 years of democratic rule and with democratic institutions like the National Assembly in place, the call is no longer relevant. Now we have a democratic system in place. It has been in place now for more than 10 years. We have in place National Assembly at the national level. We have in place state houses of assembly at the state level. We have in place local government systems at the local government level. If there is anything that is agitating anyone's mind in any part of Nigeria, you can table that your agitation either at your local government council, at your state house of assembly, or at the national assembly. Why the duplicity? Many of the attack against the proposed national dialogue has come from renowned quarters in the opposition, even from the southwest that once championed the cause. They query the timing for the national conference and have grown deeply suspicious of the president's sudden change of heart and interest on the matter. It's any correct or incorrect time for a national conference. So we have to be very careful in terms of timing it will at any time be misinterpreted. If it was done earlier, it will be said to be done too early. If it's done now, it's too near the election. So personally, I think this time is as good as any other time for the national conference. Already, there are threats by some in the opposition to boycott any national dialogue hurriedly staged at this time with less than 15 months to general elections. They believe that the entire proposal is a practical joke and a diversionary tactic by the president and his party, the People's Democratic Party PDP, to buy time and survive a self-inflicted blunder that is now tearing the party apart. I agree with Tinubu. Tinubu says that it's diversionary and it is deceptive. And I believe I read in the papers today, the APC have come to say they will not participate in it whatsoever. You see, the timing is absolutely wrong. The whole idea doesn't make any national sense. Instead, that thing is a threat to the national security interests of Nigeria. Because some people are sitting down somewhere and they want to bring people together so we can start quarreling among ourselves. But is the opposition acting in good faith on this matter? Or is it just simply out to ensure that Jonathan and the PDP never get the credit for providing Nigerians such a platform to speak their minds. APC states are coming out to say that they don't want to be part of uh, this dialogue. I don't think with all respect to them they are saying it in good faith because they have agitated for this for so long. Nigerians have wanted this for so long and if they are not coming at this time to say that they don't want this dialogue then there is something fishy there. At 53, and after 100 years of modern political history as a country, there is still a strong desire by many Nigerians to negotiate the path they wish to take and how they wish to live together. But then there are fears that the national conference could be an open invitation for anarchy. Already, there are arguments that question Nigeria's amalgamation of 1914. Some have even described the country 
as a mere geographical expression. The entire universe, the entire world, is a mere geographical expression. The entire world. We are dead there when the oceans were carved out and the Americans were created, the Africans and so on. We are dead there. The entire universe is a mere geographical expression. All that we know is that we have been living as one nation for the past 53 years. And we have been surviving and we have been tolerating each other. The best thing that can happen to our nation is for us to celebrate our being together. Not for us to begin to question why are we together. Nigeria certainly can't afford to be reckless with the way it handles the national dialogue. Many want an open, honest stock without a no-go area. Because if you are talking of no-go areas, um, there will be so many of them. And by the time you start a long list of no-go areas, uh, there may be very little left for discussion. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. Uh, you may not be able to just take one aspect and say this is a no-go area. Uh, but by the time I have no-go areas, uh, then you know you have laid a foundation for problems because it's possible there will be a clamor and already you have tainted that uh, particular conference because whatever the outcome, uh, it's already biased. Who takes a decision on no-go area? The person or persons who take that decision already have uh, impacted their thinking on the conference. But what does Nigeria really need to talk about? Many have faulted Nigeria's federal structure. The country needs to settle the nagging issues of revenue sharing and resource control. It needs to resolve issues of citizens' rights, equality and justice, recognizing merit above parochial factors of religion and ethnicity. The imbalance has been a major source of conflict and violence in the country. But Nigeria has traveled this road before and without success. Recommendations from previous national dialogues we had never implemented. If you look at all other constitutional um, uh, uh, conferences we have had, all those uh, whatever they call talk show, they were informed by one selfish political reason or the other. So we must give Mr. President a chance. The Presidential Advisory Committee, tasked with the responsibility of working out the modalities, has about two weeks to submit its recommendation. The question of how delegates will emerge for the national dialogue needs to be carefully addressed. There is a suggestion that wants political parties and government officials eliminated from the process. If you eliminate the political parties, if you eliminate those in government, you are now left with what we call the people. Now, who are the people? The people can be selected using defined associations. We have um, trade unions, we have uh, women associations, we have professional associations, we have um, um, youth associations. So we have associations of this nature, which ordinarily are expected not to be non-governmental and non-political. There are also strong views from different quarters over the expected outcome of the conference. The president has hinted that the resolutions will go before the National Assembly for inclusion in its constitutional amendment process. I am not a fan of the president, but let us give him a chance. He told us that whatever decisions that will be reached in this conference, they will be acted upon. Let us give him that chance. The way we are going, we must talk. Meanwhile, the debate continues to dominate political discourse and they've come in very strong passion, concern and interest.